Hello, welcome back to another video. We have been wanting to get some house plants in this place for quite some time now, but being a three cat household, we need to do some research first. There have been times in the past that unknowingly, either ourselves, we have brought plants into the household that ended up being toxic to cats, or we were gifted plants that accidentally ended up being toxic to cats. And thank goodness we never had any kitty emergencies, but who's to say that they didn't eat something that maybe upset their stomach? or gave them a little bit of irritation. Now whenever we buy plants for places that our cats might be, we just do some research first. Whether you have cats or dogs, I hope that this video proves helpful for you because a lot of the plants that are toxic to cats are also toxic to dogs. Of course, look it up, but there's a lot of multi-coverage there. More than anything, I hope that your takeaway from this video is that there are many common plants out there that are hiding in plain sight that are toxic to our furry friends. And if you have pets, when buying plants for your home, look up the specific type of plant that is named on the plant pot to see if it is toxic to your animal because plants tend to have a scientific name along with many nicknames that the differing varieties go by. And they don't always follow the same pattern in regards to what is or isn't toxic for animals. For example, there are some palms that are toxic to cats whereas other palms are not and same with ferns. There are some ferns that are toxic to cats and then some that aren't. So best to stay on the safe side. But without further ado, let's dive into it. Over the past few days, we went to some local nurseries, to some local stores to find some plants that are cat friendly and perfect for our tiny house. We did find a good selection. There are outdoor nurseries that you can go to. They had a huge variety of plants, but they didn't tend to be the type of plants that we were looking for, at least for the aesthetic that I was looking for, for our indoor space, which of course makes sense because outdoor nurseries, the plants are outside, they're probably meant to be outdoors just because of the sun and everything. We then went to a couple really cute indoor plant stores. They felt very boutique. They had so many beautiful plants and they really did have what we were looking for. Their prices were a little bit higher. We got a plant from each indoor plant store that we went to. because we couldn't find a specific plant that I wanted to get, a specific vining plant, we ended up going to Simple Old Home Depot. Never fails, right? They have a huge variety, both indoor and outdoor, and if I'm being honest from everything that we saw, they probably have the best prices. places you can go to get plants that I haven't even mentioned. I'm sure that farmers markets have a lot of plant options so just looking in your area and locally you'll find I imagine plants that work really well for your climate and that are possibly grown locally. So now for the list. The indoor plants that are non-toxic to cats are wheatgrass or catgrass and we buy that as seeds. Got this pouch off of Amazon and it just has a bunch of wheatgrass seeds in it. Our cats love it, they eat it up so much, and one thing that I think is cool about this specific bag is it's a burlap bag. There's no plastic, no anything, so it's completely compostable, or you could even reuse the bag for something related to gardening or planting. Another possibly obvious non-toxic plant for cats is catnip. There's also the spider plant. Prayer plants, most succulents, bamboo, money trees, staghorn ferns, cast iron plants, air plants, Brunera sea heart. And Venus flytraps. Now where it can get a little bit confusing, there are some ferns that are safe for cats and some aren't. Some of the varieties that are safe for cats are the Boston fern, 
Korean rock fern, bird nest fern, rabbit foot fern. Palms that are safe for cats, because again, not all palms are, but the ponytail palm and the parlor palm are safe for our furry friends. Beyond that, I specifically knew that I wanted to find some plants that vine. We have two planter boxes that are this size that we thought would be perfect to have a vining plant vine out of from on top of our kitchen cabinets. We thought it would give a nice look, fallen down, but it was a little harder to find vining cat safe plants. The three that we found are Peperomia, specifically the creeping Peperomia are the vining ones and they have the smaller leaves. Swedish Ivy and Hoya plants are great viners. That is the one that we got for our house. We're gonna split it into our two different rectangular planters and ideally those will just beautifully cascade down from our kitchen cabinets. Now, for the plants that are toxic to cats and also very possibly dogs. First, the ferns that are toxic. Asparagus fern. Palms, sago palms, and grass palms. So the Mexican palms are non-toxic to cats. We just looked up the birds of paradise. That guy is toxic to cats and dogs. And then so is the sago palm, so. Eucalyptus. English Ivy, Philodendron, Diaphanbachia, Monstera, Ficus plants, including the rubber plant and fiddle leaf fig, aloe vera, a sneaky succulent. We were in one of our indoor plant shops and I was so excited. I thought I'd found a vining succulent that was gonna work great for our space. I felt like it'd be extra hardy, but once we actually looked it up, it was not safe for cats. And it's called String of Bananas. It literally looks like a string of bananas, but this one almost caught me. So some succulents are okay, some are not. Again, just look it up when you're there, when you have the plant name in front of you better safe than sorry. And then the last one on the list here are pothos, also a vining plant. Pothos is the one that was getting us before that accidentally we had in our household everywhere because they are so hardy, it's so easy for the kitties to nibble on them, the plant's not gonna die, that it would just keep growing, keep regenerating itself. So that was, in our mind, the perfect plant until we found out, unfortunately, it was toxic. So we got rid of all of that and that's also kind of what brought us on this new path of finding all of these safe plants for our kitties. So with that, the question that I've always had is why are these plants toxic? What is in them that is making it so that our cats and dogs are not safe around them? And it's actually pretty logical. Two of the irritants are saponins, something that's in the plant that makes it taste bitter and it protects it from pests. So it irritates the body. It's really just trying to keep the plant alive in the wild, in nature, so that a bunch of animals aren't coming upon it, eating it, making it so it can't grow, and then it just dies off. And the second thing are raphides, which are needle-shaped crystals of calcium oxalate occurring in clusters within the tissues of certain plants. And so that's what's creating the irritation, itchiness. That's what's happening in there. These two irritants in the plants, along with all of the other ones that are out there, can cause a range of symptoms in our furry friends. They can experience itchy or irritated eye, skin, and mouth, twitching, vomiting, diarrhea, drinking extra water, urinating more often, being lethargic or drowsy, difficulty breathing and swallowing, stomach pain. It can even be as bad as systemic damages to the heart, liver, kidney, and other organs. If you do, for whatever reason, want to have one of these plants that were on the toxic list in your household, first off, the toxicity levels of these plants, most often the, the cats need to eat a lot of the plant for it to have a 
really negative effect on them but you never really know they could be secretly eating it more than one thinks that they're eating it but either way if one wants to have one of the toxic plants in the household you could always hang them from the ceiling keeping them out of reach from your cats of course make sure it doesn't turn into a toy or they're just trying to jump at it and get it and it's vining and they think it's really cool but that's one option or you could keep them in rooms that the cat cannot go into whether it's a studio or just a separate space but you also want to make sure because even if you know that your cat is not eating them if they were to brush up against them or if pollen falls from a plant that's hanging from the ceiling that they step on and get into later when they're grooming themselves they might lick that fur or lick their paws and then they're gonna get whatever it is in their system and it's still gonna cause that irritation I also think it's fair to note that with all these plants of course we want to be conscious of the plants indoors with our indoor kitties but even having these plants outside or at maybe right outside the front door there could be neighboring animals that end up being around them and that can cause negative effects for the animals as well so when able if possible just keeping plants that aren't healthy for animals away from places that these animals might be so these are the cat safe plants that we got for our space and I went into it knowing that I had two of these rectangular guys that I knew that I wanted to have the Hoya in two of these white and black planters that I still think I'm kind of trying to figure it out. I might do the spider plant in one and then the palm in another. If I'm being honest, the cats already got to our spider plant. He had much longer pieces before we had to give him a little trim to make him seem a little more impressive for the video. And then we also have three of these planters that come with our catastrophic creations hammock where they have a little spot to the side that you can put a planter in. So we thought that'd be really cool for the fern if we're able to make it fit and that would just give us some nice greenery when we're coming down the stairs from our loft. I hope this was helpful for everyone. I think that I'm going to do another video on cat safe flowers, maybe closer to the Mother's Day realm, but I mean, hey, there are so many plants out there. We got to be careful. We got to be safe for our little loved ones. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you aren't subscribed already and you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and subscribe so you can see more things like it. I hope you and your furry friends have a great rest of your day and we will see you guys next time. Bye.